This video is sponsored by I Put the Egg on the Sulaco. It was me, t shirt. Check it out at the viral store. Come on. Come here and give your mommy a big kiss. Let me go, Mom! I don't want to kiss you! My friends are watching! Trilobite versus Engineer. Well, we all know what happened there. The Trilobite is strong enough to overpower the Engineer's biomech suit. So, pretty damn strong. The King of Facehuggers. Not Queen. That spot's already taken. By this guy. Anyway, let's explore this giant, rapey creature in more detail. During the USCSS Prometheus' mission to LV-223 in 2093, after Charlie Holloway is infected by the black liquid pathogen, he unknowingly impregnates Elizabeth Shaw with a trilobite when the two sleep together. Later, when Shaw's about to give birth to the trilobite, she uses the Pauling MedPod 720i in Vickers' FTL lifeboat to remove it from herself. The trilobite is presumed dead after Shaw decontaminates the MedPod, but unknown to her, it was merely unconscious and would later grow to a massive size. Similar to a facehugger, its primary purpose appears to be to implant an embryonic deacon into a host. It's not made clear if the creature was conceived by their intercourse, or if the infant's creature merely moved into Shaw from the infected Holloway. It's unknown how the creature gets out of its host naturally, as Shaw removes it prematurely. However, its exaggerated movements prior to this suggest that it bursts like belly bursters, emerging from the host's abdomen. The infant trilobite resembles a big four-armed squid. However, it's extremely aggressive and grows to an incredible size, with no biomass to take in in very little time. Although Shaw attempts to decontaminate the medpod and kill the infant's creature, it's merely rendered unconscious and later grows to an enormous size. When Vickers' lifeboat is jettisoned down onto LV-223 with the trilobite on board, Shaw releases the trilobite from the medbay, where it attacks the engineer coming after her. After a brief struggle, the trilobite is able to subdue and impregnate the engineer. The trilobite dies a short time later, and the engineer gives birth to a deacon. As an adult, it resembles an extremely large facehugger, even larger than engineers, but with many differences. It comprises many large tentacles, which are strong enough to subdue the nine-foot-tall last engineer, and also has six smaller tentacles that shoot out around its mouth. Unlike a facehugger, it does not leap onto the victim's face, but instead grabs it with its tentacles and attempts to subdue it long enough to impregnate it, after which it settles its considerable body mass on top of the host's body. At the center of its body is a large mouth, inside which resides a large feeding tube used to impregnate its host. At the back of the trilobite are holes, likely used for breathing or redirecting the air into its host. During impregnation, hosts lose strength and fall unconscious, like normal facehugger victims. The impregnation process seems to be the same as the facehuggers, but when a trilobite impregnates a host, it results in a deacon. The trilobite also dies after it impregnates a host. The trilobite lacks a trilobed body and bears no resemblance to the prehistoric creature of the same name. The trilobite shares its name with a species of extinct marine arthropod known through its extensive fossil record. This synonymy comes from the fact early designs for the monster in Prometheus were somewhat based on the creature, being a vertebrate with two horn-like appendages on its head. However, the final design in the film bears no relation to the real-world creatures. The creature's pale skin was inspired by the flaky, pale hue that overcomes deceased organisms preserved in formaldehyde. So there you have it, that's some basic information on the trilobite. Do you have any additional information? Please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Also, please follow me on Twitter. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, consider supporting me on Patreon. Or you might catch me serving you at McDonald's real soon. Oh, and make sure you click the bell icon to turn on notifications. I'll see you later.